Welcome back to our channel. This week, we are going to talk about multiple hides and how to address multiple hides in a trial setting. Now, obviously, it all starts with training, but before we get into this, I'd like to take a little bit of time to talk about my membership section, folks. For $6.99 a month, we have full access to everything scent work related. We are taking you on a journey from start to finish in the training system in which we utilize that just makes your dog more accurate and increases their search intensity and increases their focus. It makes a dog that you're truly gonna trust. Now, we've always had it to where uh, a member once a month can submit a video. Maybe they're having some problems. Maybe they're struggling in a trial. Uh, and we'll break it down and help them uh, improve their performance. However, we just opened up a $24 membership option. Now that option, folks, those members, and we're only gonna take 15 members in this tier. Those members are going to be able to submit video once a month, and we're gonna break it down, and we're gonna talk, and we're gonna show you what you can do to improve your dog's performance. A lot of folks have said, hey, I can't get to a workshop. Well, the greatest thing to a workshop is our online video section on the YouTube membership page, folks. Uh, if you don't wanna be locked into that, buy us a coffee, the link's down below. We're gonna to continue to put good stuff on, on our YouTube channel, but the bread and butter, the good stuff, we've got a lot of good stuff coming up, folks, is on our membership section. Now, we're gonna talk about a multiple hide scenario. As a judge, I see so many people burn the clock, waste time on the clock addressing multiple hides. Now, if you've watched our previous video, you've noticed that, that in these videos, we start very early on talking to our dogs. And the reason we do this is we believe in verbal reward, verbal reinforcers. We can use that verbal reward, that verbal reinforcer to increase our dog's search intensity. Maybe that dog's coming through here and not paying attention. We can simply say, no, come on, check, check. Get the dog back on track, right? Um, if the dog finds the first odor, we're not gonna dig around in our pocket. We're not gonna dig around in our treat pouch to reward the dog. Our first reward, if we're looking at the generic search area here, our first reward there is simply gonna be verbal. So the dog's gonna alert. I'm gonna say alert. The judge is gonna tell me yay or nay. And then at that point, I'm gonna say, okay, good, come on, find another. And boom, my dog is off. As soon as my dog hears me getting hyped, okay, come on, find another. The dog's off, searching, and then to the second one. I'm not gonna reward with a treat or a toy at the second one either. It's gonna be verbal, verbal, toy, or verbal, verbal food. So I can be, come on, find another. Boom, find another. Come on, find another. And you notice how I said it. You notice how different it was. I'm not sitting here digging around for a treat, fumbling with the treat. And even this, folks, some of the treats that you're using on trial, people are using these hard treats that their dog's standing there literally one second, two seconds, three. Their dog's burning the clock eating these treats before they get refocused. So I'm going to go the first one, dog alerts, alert. Yeah. Okay, come on, find another. Second one. Okay, find another, right? So I've got my alert, alert. And when I say finish and I say correct, that's when I'm gonna say yes. And I'm gonna reward with my toy, which is either gonna be tug at source or I'm gonna reward at source with the treat. If you wanna know more about this, jump over to our membership section. This whole thing plays out into our chart that we discuss. Um, it plays out into our reward system that we discuss and you will hear me time and time again talk about our reward system both on this channel and on our membership section. And you will always see me ref talk about referring back to your chart. We wanna keep the dog at an eight in search intensity and an eight in focus. If we get too far on either side, we lose something. So folks, don't underestimate the power of verbal praise and don't underestimate the power of direct reward. I know that some people are thinking that that's not the way to go, but if you look at what we're doing, let's, let's break it down. If we're a marksman and this is a bullseye and then you have a nine ring and then an eight and then a seven and a six. And I apologize for my art, I'm not an artist, but if I'm shooting consistently out here, I'm not an expert marksman. 
My goal on the range is to be constantly in this 10X ring. Not the nine, not the eight, not the seven, not the six. 10X wins competition marksmanship and 10X without a doubt creates a dog that you don't question. I want a dog that's gonna do everything it can to get the source. And if you want that, if you want a sniper sniffer, then jump over to our membership section, folks. And with that, I will see you next week.